great about that, other than trying to help people who are in a state of disease. Welcome back to the Immigration Answers Show. My name, James Oliver Hacking III. My game, immigration, 24-7. How's everybody doing? This is episode 571. We've done this 571 times. That's 571 hours of free immigration content. If you're so inclined, you can go all the way back to episode number one and get yourself a master's degree in U.S. immigration law. You'd also probably have a lot of fun listening to all the hilarious hijinks and problems that people get themselves tied up into. I've learned a lot doing this show. Sometimes people ask me a question. And I don't know the answer. And I go back and I look up the answer. Sometimes I don't, depending on how tired I am, depending on how crabby I am, depending on how hungry I am. So. It is Ramadan, so I am hungry. Um, it's the, I don't know, Sunday was 21, so today's day 23 of Ramadan. Uh, Eid, inshallah, God willing, will be a week from tomorrow. Won't that be something? Won't that be something? And then I'm off to San Diego, which is, for those of you who don't know, my happy place, other than Jamaica, of course. How's everybody doing? Good to see everyone in the comments. David is new here. Welcome, David. Tyrone is here. Hina is here, as she often is. Hina is going to be joining the Hacking Immigration Law team in a couple of weeks, and we're excited about that. Uh, TNT to the H-Town is here. Phoenix is here. Jay Cruz, that's Ms. Jay Cruz, for those of you who don't know, is up in North Dakota. Vishnu got some good news today, and glad to uh, see Vishnu here. Ms. B from NYC is here. And Robert's here. Oh, there's more. Wait, but wait, there's more. Roll call. Yep, Portland, Canada. Oh, Dammy's here. Haven't seen her in a while. How's it? How you doing, Dammy? Uh, Rocio's here. Evacuating school from a tornado. Yeah, those tornadoes just passed through here yesterday. And Nurse Laura says it's a beautiful day in Seattle. Got Michelle in the ATL. Trilene is in Ohio. We have Botswana in the house. Botswana. I know that's in Africa. Is that by South Africa? I think it is. Botswana. Yeah, I think it is. Um, Bernadine got here at the beginning. We got Hina's in Dubai on vacation this week. Temi's here. Temi, I'm doing well on my fast. I'm doing fast. I'm doing well. Um, Sonny's here early. Great. Michael's here from San Diego. Um, you guys don't know this yet. Oh, Nurse Laura's here. Everybody's here. You guys don't know this yet. And I'm going to play it for you early, but, um, Ms. Donna's son sent me the shout out we got for all the Yardies on Jamaican radio yesterday. So that was pretty exciting. And I will play that for you in a little bit. All right, all right. Let's talk to Manny. Hello, Manny. Hi, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? Not bad, thank you. What's up? Uh, I just, so this is my first time on here. I don't know how, like, do I just fire off my yeah, questions? You tell, me, tell me what, tell me what you want to ask. Yeah. So welcome to the show. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming. Um, Thank maybe you. just tell a little bit about your situation and what your question is for me. Sure. Um, uh, my situation is I, I just, uh, I've been with my partner for the last five months. Uh, she lives in Tucson. So I'm from Vancouver, Canada. Uh, I'm looking to stay out here, so I'm looking to see what I can do in terms of uh, residency and green cards or work visas, what's the, what the best option is, how long does it take to get a green card, um, would it be easier to do like a work visa, get it through employment if I find something out here, or um, if, I, if it would be easier for me to just get it through her, potentially. Um, there's a lot of questions that I have, so I just, sure. uh, yeah. How long, how long have you and your partner been together? Five months. And do you want to get married? Yes. And do you want to stay here while all this is working out? Is that what's most important to like being together is the most important thing? Yes. Okay. And you entered five months. And when did you enter? Enter the uh, U.S. U.S. Uh, 23rd of March. So recently. 23rd of March. Okay. So that would be like 10 days ago. Okay. Yes. So if someone comes to the United States and is hanging out with their partner, and they decide to get married. 
the U.S. citizen can file an I-130 petition for them and say, this is my alien relative. This is my spouse. I want them to get an immigrant visa to the United States. I want them to be able to either come to the United States or get a, a green card. So you could go back to Canada and wait it all out there, but um, you could just do it all here. So you would file an I-130, an I-45, which would be an application from you to change your status from a Canadian visitor to a green card holder, and then you'd file for a temporary work card and a travel document. And then you'd have to submit a medical exam and a affidavit of support. So you'd have to get her taxes for the last three years and make sure she makes enough money. Um, obviously, this would all be after you get married. And you can't get married in the first 60 days. If you get married in the first 60 days, that's going to be a problem. So even with that, a five-month relationship, it's pretty quick for USCIS. So you might want to wait and go back and come back and do it another time, but whatever. Whenever you apply, it's probably going to take four or five months to get the work card and then around probably another four or five months to get the uh, green card. Now, fees went up yesterday and USCIS is going under a lot of change, so nobody knows if things are going to start going faster or slower. So that I'm just giving you the a rundown based on what we've seen over the years. Okay. But if employment and stuff, what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a caregiver back home. So I work with, uh, you know, I work in a group home with like uh, for special needs and things like that. So good for you. Good for you. Um, so that would be a hard, that'd be hard to get an employment based green card. If, if you have the opportunity and it's a legit marriage and you're in love and you just want to be together, going the work route would take much, much longer and it'd be much more of a headache. If I was to do that, like through employment? Yeah, that would be much more complicated. It's going to be much easier for the spouse. Because my, my sister lives in Atlanta. She said that would probably be the fastest and easiest way instead of me doing it myself. No. Uh, I'm not looking to, like, we want to get married, but I'm not sure when exactly. Like, we don't yeah. have a thing. Um, but, but that is the goal in the long term. But for now, like, I just want to come here and, you know, I want to stay here. And I was also wondering how long I can stay here because I know if I stay here too long, um then then when i go back they might not allow me to come back right so you should stick to the deadlines that they give you and okay. if, you, if you're not going to do it all on this trip and do it on a future trip which i'm 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 okay with because i don't want you to rush to get married just to get status so of course. Um, so i think that um you know let the relationship play play itself out see what happens and then get married when the time is right and then and then we can deal with the immigration stuff later just don't ever get married less than 60 days after you arrive in the United States, that would cause a problem. Other than that, I would say just let it play itself out and call us back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not so much that I want to get married to have my residency. Like that's, that is the goal, but I, I just want to live here and like you're, you're wait, sorry, I'm just trying to recollect what you're trying to say. So you're saying marriage is the easiest way to get a green card. Yep. For sure. So go by, like by far, by far, it's not even close any other way. That 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 okay? Because I, you know, I okay. <laughs> That's my only shot then. Okay, it's good to know. Um, well, I mean, you are Canadian, and you can come visit your partner very easily. They can come visit you very easily. So, you know, you could do big chunks of time together, just not like living here full time. And then when the time is right, I would slow it down. Five months is pretty fast, so I would slow it down a little bit. And I would say, boy, I really like being together, but we're going to just going to have to pay our dues a little bit to make sure that we're in the best position later on. That's what I would do. So so where, where can I get the deadlines of like how long I can stay here? Because I don't want to like overstep. Well, usually usually it's six months. Did they tell you you can look up your I-94 online? Did they tell you when you came through how long they were letting you in? No. No, no, they didn't say anything. Yeah. So you look for the I-94 lookup and it should say on there when you have to leave. It's N94 on the uh, I90, I90, I, I94 I lookup, and then it's probably 90 days or six, or six months, one or the other. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, then, uh, yeah, I'll do that. And then um, how do I get back in touch with you guys? Yeah, you can just email us, info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com, info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com, and then you can go from there. Immigration law. Okay, info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com. Okay, and then... Um, so okay so i have a couple other questions can you hear me right now because i'm on okay i sorry i just have um how, how much how much is the cost to like hire a lawyer and everything if things go 
Yeah, so our our so our fee usually for a marriage based green card is six thousand, but because the filing fees just went up, we lowered it temporarily to five thousand. Okay. Um, so it's five thousand for us, and if you want to do the work card and the advanced parole, then that's another three thousand for the government. Okay. Okay. So overall, eight. And for us, you know, we have a finance company that we work with, or you can pay like half up front and then break up the rest. Okay. Okay. Eight. Okay. And then, um, if I do, if I, so it's kind of tough, right? Cause I'm just trying to see like, um, if I do, cause, cause I do have employment out here. Like I, before even coming here, I got a job, like an opportunity, but the thing was that they don't want to look into the whole green card work visa thing for me. So, um, they said, figure all that out. And then when you come back, like, um, or when you do get it, then we'd be more than happy to hire you. But I'm just thinking, like, um, are, would there be companies out here that would be? I mean, I could work under the table, right? If if it's six months that I do have to go back. Well, so here's the deal. I, I can I'm, I can only tell you to follow the law. So I'm going to tell you what the law is. Okay, the law right. says that you're not supposed to work in the United States without work authorization. Okay. The law, the law also says that if you work in the United States without permission, that's a problem for you and the employer. And the law also says that if you don't leave on time, that's a problem. So all those things are true. Okay. Also true is that if you marry a U.S. citizen and you've worked without permission or overstayed your visa, that is all forgiven. Okay. So, yeah, there's a chance of me ruining this. No, no you didn't hear what I said. If you marry a U.S. citizen and you work without permission or you overstay, they'll forgive you for that as long as you're honest about it. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, yeah, for sure. How did you find us in the first place? Um, I actually, so I was watching like a church service thing the other day with my spouse, well, with my partner and then her friend um, came, came by and she's trying to get her husband from Nigeria to come here mm. and you guys so she gave me your number through um through her so thanks manny keep stay yeah. in touch, buddy will do thank you later all right all right all right all right that was a good first call how about that uh jack is here hello jack hey jim how you doing i'm well how are you sir pretty good it's been a couple of months since i last spoke with you you've helped helped me with some questions with my stepdaughter and one almost two years ago or about my wife uh i got it I always have crazy questions for you, <laughs> but, but, but I got to tell you something. Hey, see all this nice citizenship interview in two weeks. Nice. That's great. Yeah. Good. And uh, they transferred the I-751 to the uh, offices. Good. Yeah. Good. So yeah. We're, yeah. We're just, it, it's like five years we've been working on this. Which field office? uh that's doing the citizenship mm -hmm. uh nbc where the, uh, the national benefit center no no where is the, where will her interview be oh oh it's gonna be it's gonna be here in um uh, greenville south carolina okay great yeah hey listen so this 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 is something that i i want to know about and um for us or for my wife but let me tell you what happened and then and then um and then you can tell me what you think so uh, we have a friend, uh, she's Thai. She went, she has a, has her conditional green card, went to Thailand, visit family, has her 48 month extension. Her, her two American born children and her American husband getting ready to come back. They're in the line waiting and they get up and um, a a, -N -A at, uh, uh, Saranabumi Airport in Bangkok has, has a notice from CBP deny boarding. To all of them or just to her? Just her. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And the good news is that, you know, she's got family there. You know, the bad news is that, you know, it's kind of a lousy, lousy way to end. It looks like what happened in this case, I'm going to finish this and I'll tell you what I, what I need to know for me and, and my wife. Yeah. It looks like what's happened is that she had an overstay sometime in the past. And when they send the manifest, the airline to CBP, the theory is, is that they told the airline she can't come back. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And yeah. Yeah. It's, wow. it's a drag. So, so here, so here, here's, here's what happened for me. Um, he got me to thinking, you know, and, yeah. and it was okay. So I didn't know 
everybody should check their I-94 when they get back to the United States. Yeah, but that's a crapshoot. You can't tell. And she she couldn't. There's nothing she could have checked to see that beforehand. I know. But I went ahead and checked my wife's. And it, and so when she got back last year, she went back to Thailand. Hadn't seen her family in over three years. Got back. But, but I checked hers. And on her admission classification, she got a green card. They put her admission classification as B2. And this last entry. Yep. And and with a you know with a six month, right? Yeah. So I contacted CBP and they changed it to LBR. Yeah. Which is a good thing. But they did not change the the date that it's good good for. So my question is, what is it is there anything like she'll be a citizen hopefully in two weeks, right? right. But just trying to cover all my bases. What takes precedence when when you're outside and you're coming back in on a green card, is it your lawful status as a green card holder or is it, or is it what's in CBP's database? So, well, that, so that's the crazy thing is CBP has a ton of discretion on who they let in the United States, even if they're wrong. So USCIS has clearly the, this lady's spouse is a U.S. citizen. Yes, sir. So USCIS has clearly forgiven that overstay Absolutely. And um, so what's your friend going to do? Is she reaching out to CBP? Where does she live in the United States? Um, she lives here on the East Coast. And so she's staying with family in Bangkok and, and, and they're trying to they're trying to sort this out as we as we speak. Where's her husband? Her husband had to go back for, for work. And because of the logistics, she has both of her babies. Yeah. Right. And her family is helping, Good. which actually, husband's, logistically, husband's, it was the right thing to do. Husband's in the United States. Yes. So I'd be going over. I'd be going to like if I'm over by you, I'd go down to Atlanta and meet with CBP and try to sort it out face to face. Okay. I will pass that information. In answer to your question, the green card should trump should um, trump everything. It should trump everything. No pun intended. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a loaded one, Jim. Hey, listen, one one other quick thing, you know, as I was researching this, you know, one of the things that 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 came came to my awareness, which I, I knew, was that, you know, you as an American citizen, you might end up on a watch list or something. So it's just it's not a given that you're not going to be told you can't board. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I tell people all the time, you know, travel at your own risk. Yep, for it's, sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, once you're a citizen, they, they pretty much have to let you back in. Even when Trump came in office and tried that ban from like there were a couple of days where green card holders weren't being able to come back. But that that went out pretty fast. Yeah. All well, right. Jim. Thanks, Jack. Got, let dude. us know, let us know when she gets her citizenship. OK. Can you believe it? <laughs> I'm happy for you. See you, buddy. Thank you, brother. You take care. Bye. Okay. All right. All right. It's not too often that. Uh, you hear a story like that, getting stuck outside the United States with a, ten, uh, a, a four year extension letter and a conditional green card. Um, that's some that's some dirty, dirty pool. All right. Um, let's go to Michael Samuel. Hello, Michael. I can't hear you, buddy. I can't hear you. I still can't hear you, buddy. I don't know what's up. It's not the mute. It's something else. I'll come back. I'll come back, Michael. I don't know what's up. Maybe call in with some other device. Lance is here. Hello, Lance. Hey. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Great. Um. So I got. So basically, my boyfriend. He's Venezuelan. We're gonna get married this year. He crossed illegally um, two years ago, presented himself to immigration immediately. He currently has an asylum pending with USCIS and the EOIR. Yep. Um, now, I was recommended by an old attorney friend that I worked for um, that what he could do is administratively close his asylum. Do We already did the TPS. Get a travel authorization, leave the country and come back. And then he could adjust his status instead of having to worry about the asylum. Um, only problem is he doesn't have his passport. So I don't know how we would be able to leave the country or if there are any countries he could go to. Um, 
and I'm just kind of, I don't know what to do there. You are correct that he needs a passport. Um, I, I'm reluctant to give advice on something this complicated over a call like this. I'd want to look at everything, but generally I think that's right. I mean, if he got TPS advanced parole, that would set him up, but he'd have to have a passport. So, so I, I mean, I don't know if, about Canadian law or what, but since there's no Venezuelan consulate, right. would he be able to go to Canada to get his pat to like do the, cause he has someone that could file this whole passport thing. Would he be able to go to Canada for the appointment and come back with like his U S paperwork or how would that work? No, they would most likely look him in as having, if he leaves to go to Canada, like maybe what he needs to do is to, terminate the asylum case, get the TPS, get the, get the uh, advanced parole. Cause that's what he's going to need to get back in the country. If he doesn't have that, the U S won't let him back in. They'll just say that he, right. So, I'm saying after the advanced parole gets approved, would Canada let him go in to go I, get his passport? That's a question yeah. for the lawyer. Yep. Okay. All right. Thanks Lance. Thank you. Bye buddy. All right. Michael's back. Let's see Michael. Hi, Jam. Hi, buddy. How you doing? Good. So, um, I got a question. I got um, I applied for my citizenship last June. Yeah. And uh, I went for interview um, this this March twenty fifth, and uh, I passed the test. But they said they couldn't make decision yet. Wow. So I got RFE on uh, yesterday. So, because with my immigration history, I know I was ordered, deported, or removed by the judge in Florida, in Orlando. That was 2014. Yeah. And uh, so, and I applied for green card under Liberia Refugee Immigration Fairness. Yeah. And uh, under that, I am eligible to apply because. Um, I'm a Liberian by citizen. Mm -hmm. And uh, so w then they asked, um, they asked for my termination of my removal. But under that Liberian Liber refugee fairness, it said if they got my green card approved, they would notify ICE that they have to cancel my. Who said that? Under the Liberian, uh, under the act, it's under there. Uh, even check it on my. I checked it today on the on the USCIS website because when they passed the Liberia Immigration Fairness Act, it was passed under the DOD under Trump then. So, and I was checking it again. I checked it today and it said uh, any green card approval under that Liberia Immigration Fairness, they will notify uh, US, uh, uh, ICE. But did it apply retroactively? Um, I I think I think so because it's I already got a green card in my hand. I got well, I know, but the the I think they're they're. I'm just trying to think from their point of view. They might be saying they think that you got your green card by mistake. Mm. That if USCIS the USCIS gave you the green card, right? Not the immigration court. The USCIS gave me the green card, and you had a deportation order at the time. Yes. So if you had a deportation order, that means you're still under the jurisdiction of the immigration court. So just putting the Liberian question to the side. Yeah. Then um, then USCIS did not have the authority to issue you the green card. So then we have to look at the statute and see. So did you get your did you get your green card before the statute was passed? I assume so. If it was Trump, right? It was under Trump and uh, it was passed uh, under Trump in 2019, I think. But you already had your green card then, right? No, I got my green card uh, approved uh, 2023. Well, why don't you send me the why don't you send me the notice? I'll do a little check and that'd be an interesting thing for us to look at here. I'm happy to look at it for you. OK, yeah, I can say you mean the RFE? Or yeah, the RFE. Yeah. And maybe okay. uh, maybe your green card approval notice or your copy of your green card, either one. I, OK, I will do that. I, I will email it to you. Thanks, Michael. You're welcome. Bye, buddy. Hey, Nurse Laura, I'm always up to dump on the Trump administration. I don't think this particular issue is, is bad about Trump, but I, I, I understand the sentiment. 
All right. Jean is here. Jean. Hello. How are you, Jim? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. All right. So I came to the USA on J1 visa. My visa didn't have the two-year restriction rule. It did not? Yeah, it didn't have. So uh, it's expiring you know, uh, on the 9th of October this year. Okay. So I made a real mistake, but I don't know. I should take the four because I'm the one who filed. So my husband sent me a bank statement from home to here. And then when I filed, I filed last week on the 26th of March. I filed with the bank statement as the additional documents. So yesterday, he was trying to download uh, his bank statement online. And then he saw some he saw some things that he didn't understand for him. He had to go back to the bank and ask him, like, why is his bank balance not reducing? It's not showing anything from, from January until today. And that's when they started, like, going back on his uh, financial records. And they apologized to him that it was their system uh, which had some errors meaning the bank statement he gave me uh, was not accurate. And it was, when I tried to check it now, when you told me yesterday, I have seen some funny things on the dates, like the dates are not corresponding, and I have already found, how can I rectify the problem? So let me see if I understand. So right now you're married to a U.S. citizen, is that right? No, 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 no. He is back in my country in Zimbabwe. He just gave me the bank statement because I wanted to change my status to F1. Oh. Yes. Well, that was a bad idea in the first place. So I'm not a big fan of trying to change from a J1 to an F1 inside the United States, right? Um, but putting that to the side, so what you're saying is you downloaded bank statements. Mm -hmm. or the, is it an American bank or an overseas bank? An overseas bank. And so you downloaded these statements. Yes. You didn't, you didn't check them. You submitted them with the F1. And then after you submitted them, you figured out that they had mistakes. Yes. I used the same bank statement to, uh, for a school to give me I-20. They gave me the I-20. They didn't even notice uh, uh, no the, the problem. Yes. What country is this bank located in? South Africa. Hmm. Well, um, I think you're going to need to send them a letter with updated to explain to them what happened and send them the accurate statements. But th I mean, that's going to, that's going to set off their alarm bells big time. They're not going to like any of this. So should I upload another bank statement on the portal or what? What best I mean, can you that's advise? That's your call. I mean, I don't think you should be trying to do what you're doing. I don't think you should be trying to change from an F1, from a J1 to an F1 in the United States. They could take a year to decide that well past October. Now you're starting sort of early, so that's okay. But generally I don't like the idea. I, I, you can't, it's very, very hard to change status in the United States now because they're so focused on trying to get green cards done that they take, they'll take a year. What happens if we're sitting here a year from now and you still don't have an answer on your, on your F1 change? What are you going to do? Oh, I didn't think that far because right. yeah. I mean, Where'd you get the idea to even change from a J1 to an F1? You can try it, but it, it causes lots of problems. Oh. Okay. Like, I, I'd rather you go back home, hang out for a while, and then apply for an F1 through the embassy. Oh. And, and then I, I, might, I might especially want that now. Like, I might want to just withdraw this one and go in October mm -hmm. and then try to do it all through the consulate because right now you have sort of like a poison application out there, you know, like it's, it's bad. Yeah, I understand it. Yeah, and they might be mad at the school too. Sorry? They might be mad at the school too for giving you an I-20 off bank statements that don't have any activity. Yeah, because I noticed it's my... I really have to go over it again yesterday. That's when I realized that the bank statement is not really accurate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thanks, Jean. All right. So I, I did. So are you saying I should withdraw the application or what? I think there's a very, very strong argument to withdraw the application and start over. Yes. 
All right. So when, when I withdraw it, I have to start it when I leave USA. That's yeah. your advice. Yeah. Uh, all right. So there's no way like I can delete the old bank statement and well, put a new one? There's not. I, I didn't say there's no way. I'm not saying that you couldn't do that. I'm just saying that isn't what I would recommend. All right. Or oh, what about the other way? Of what? I mean, if you Is go back home, if you go back home, they might say, Gene, you were just in there for two years. We don't want you to go back. They might not give you the visa. So, yes. so you have to figure out what's, I, I don't, I don't give people answers on this stuff. I just talk about, I just talk about what I see. And then you have to decide. I don't, I don't tell you one way or the other what to do. Either Both ways have problems. Yeah. Because yeah, that's why I decided like, let me try to apply inside because I was like, afraid of risking like go back and then I apply and then they deny. That totally could happen. Sorry? That could totally happen. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Gene. All right. Thank yeah. you. Yep. AZ says, but she's rung the bell. She has rung the bell, but it's not immigrant. They're both non-immigrant visas. So there's a problem. It's it's a it's like I said, a poison situation, but it's not totally fatal. But I think both both approaches have problems. Dan is here. Hello, Dan. How you doing, sir? Good, sir. I saw you driving, so I'm glad you pulled over. So I, I called you right up. How you doing? Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Uh, I can't complain. So I'm an international student that moved to South Africa about a year. I moved from South Africa to the United States about a year, a year and four months ago. So I was going to uh, a community college in Phoenix. So my at the time, I, I went to school for Three semesters? Yeah, three semesters because, yeah, three semesters. I was in school active for three semesters, paid in full, didn't have any credit. So it came a time where I had a bit of competition with my scholarships, my funding. So I was I was already in a relationship with a girl. So we were already engaged at the time. We got married. And then we got married. We recently filed about right before the deadline. So my question to you is, like, since we sent the application before the deadline, Will the fees be incurred to us when they double? Because they double on the first, right? Yeah. When did when did you do you have the postmark? Do you have proof of delivery? Do you have proof of when you sent it? Yeah, uh, we sent it before five days before the first. Five days before, yeah. You should have the old fees. You should be all old fees. Okay. Uh, so I wanted to so and my me and my wife. She's currently seven months pregnant. Seven months. Seven months pregnant. Oh. So me and her have been in a relationship for, we've been married for less than six months. Mm -hmm. We have been in a relationship for close over a year, like it's going over a year. So I just want to find out on my case, like, do you think I have a good shot? Because currently right now I'm not, I don't have my F1. I am registered in school, but I'm only going back in the fall. Mm -hmm. How will that affect? Like, well, it's always better to be in status throughout the whole time, but you, you know, you have a valid entry, you're married to a U.S. citizen. It's all about proving up the marriage that it was based on love. The fact that you're having a kid will help, um, but you're going to need to prove it up that it's legit and not just to get an immigration benefit. Yeah, so yeah. No, we, we do, we have, we have, we do live together. We have uh, in the application, I did add a lease. We have bank statements that we have been, even from the time I met her. Yeah. We had so many things going back and forth together. And uh, the biggest thing is just like, I'm just looking at the time. It may seem a bit, because it's like under two years. Yeah, it's okay. That's okay. I think you're fine. Just keep proving it up. Keep keep developing evidence. Assume they're going to call you in for an interview. Assume they might ask you for more evidence. Just keep gathering it, making it better. Get those medical records for the baby. Just keep keep going. You're doing fine. Well, I appreciate you, sir. Thank you. It's wants to tap in with that. Uh, I'm confident I'm gonna get the green cards. They owe good. me this. Like you said, they owe me this. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate your boss. Thank Bye, you. buddy. See ya. Yep, for sure. All right, all right. Um, all in sounds like Yoda. Unpredictable and stressful is the green card process. I would agree. I would agree. Even in Texas, that is true. All right, James is here. Hello, James. Yeah, I'm good. How you doing, James? Good, man. How you doing? Yeah. I'm, I'm okay. I have two questions for you, right? I have a problem one time like that because I was married to a U.S. citizen. I came into the country in 2016. So I, we got married and um, everything was going on fine. 
but I have a divorce decree from my hometown, which was um like um a, a, a traditional marriage, not like a regular marriage, right? So the officer on the day of the interview felt like um she don't understand that kind of um, divorce from Nigeria at that time. So they said I need to have a divorce coming from the court. So which I explained to her, like this is a traditional marriage. We don't need no court. Like it's a bright price that I paid and it was returned. So we, she argued it and all that. So I, I put my foot on the ground, like telling her, that listen, this is Nigeria. You don't understand the way it works. I didn't go to the courts to get married. This is just like a traditional marriage where families come together, sit down and pay bread price. So she didn't get it. So at the end of the day, because the way I spoke to her or something like that, I don't know. So she called me out and uh, make sure my wife at that time withdraw the application. So which um, we got home. Before that time, I have evidence of the my wife being abusive and all that. So I switched to VAWA case. So with Why? the VAWA case, Wait, because on. wait, hold on, James. Okay, all right. Okay, I'll, you go ahead. I'll be quiet. Okay, so which we went with we to our case and all that. So because she left the house, practically telling me I'm still married to my old wife and all. but that's not the story right now. Anyway, but so we switched to our case. So which I we we are going on it and all that. They at the end of the day. Well, I came through with the um, divorce decree and all that, but they said I don't have any evidence. The evidence that I have was in the video, so which I keep sending them. They, they ask where is the evidence for the abuse. I keep sending them video for um, video. They say they can't watch video at the end of the day, so they deny the case. But they didn't deny the case until I was I was given an advance parole, which I was in Dublin. So I was in Dublin when that case was denied. So I tried to come back to America. So the CBD officer tried to convince me to withdraw my application. But my question is, my first question is, I, they convinced me to withdraw my application by myself, which um, I did. So what I'm trying to say, if I have to come back to America, do I need to, uh, do I need a, a waiver because I withdraw my case by myself? So who's gonna, like, who's gonna let you in? What's the basis of you coming back in? They said, they, they just, the the uh, officer said, my um, I-360 was denied. No, I'm saying so. Where so right now you're outside the United States, right? Yeah, I'm outside the United States. Yeah. So how do you think you're going to come back? You need to forget okay, everything. Yeah. Well, yeah. What happened was then as at that time because this the Vawa case was for two years, so I already had a partner which we were dating and all that. She was pregnant at that time. So due to this uh, my situation, she miscarried and all that. So we 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 got married. She came to me. We got married and all that. We did um, the um, online wedding and all that. So then we uh, filing and all we filing for the I one thirty petition and the I thirty one I one thirty petition was approved. It was approved and all that because we have a lot of evidence. We've been together, we live together and all that. But she was just like a girlfriend, but we got married and all that. So it all went through. But my second, my first question is, do I need a waiver for that? Then my um, second question, I, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I, I they might think you misrepresented something. I, it's there's no way to tell. You just got to keep going. You can't file the waiver now anyway. You no, I can't find a waiver, yeah. But like I've been trying to see if, uh, because they said if I have to pull in my um, my application, that if I have to pull in my, um, if I withdraw my um, entry by myself, I don't think I need a waiver, but I just want to confirm if I need a waiver or something. Well, I, your, your attempted entry with advanced parole that you withdrew, that's the least of my concerns. That's the least of my concerns. The problem is, okay. what country are you from? I'm from Nigeria. So this is the Nigerian playbook. They've seen all these movies before. They've seen the guy that comes to the United States and marries someone and then and then doesn't have a valid divorce decree. So then they deny no, it. I know, they, they act I, know, I know. I know. I know you know about I know you put your foot down. I get that. What I'm saying is they've seen this movie before. They did not okay. they did not deny your case while you were outside the United States on advanced parole by mistake. That was on purpose. They wanted to okay. F you. They didn't want you to come back to the United States. Okay. So their their guns are out. They're 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 the, the getting the I one thirty is good. That means they believe you're legally eligible to marry. But I think they're going to throw up all kinds of flack, especially whenever you ha are you going to have an embassy interview in Nigeria or somewhere else? Yeah, but what, what I'm trying, what I want to do now is that my second question is I'm still in Dublin, but like um I'm on um on asylum right here. 
So I'm trying to see if um, being on asylum, if it's advisable for me to have my consular process here in Dublin. That's what I want to know. It's better than better than Nigeria. Yeah, but somebody somebody told me like if I'm on 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 um uh on asylum here, I can I, that um United States is not going to allow me to go through consular post process in um I that, Dublin. I don't believe that's true. I've had clients on asylum go to embassy interviews in Italy and other countries. I don't know about yeah, Ireland. that's what, yeah, that's what I want to know but, because somebody was just telling me it's not I mean, a lawyer though. It just seems like you've you've used every trick in the book. It seems like you're showing that you're desperate to come to the United States or desperate to stay outside Nigeria. You file asylum in Ireland. You file an I-130. You file an I-360. You marry a new woman. You file an I-130. They, this is the kind of stuff that pisses them off. I don't think they're going to let you back in. I don't. I don't think they. They don't. There's no way in hell they want to give you a, an immigrant visa. There's no way in hell they want to give you a green card. You might win. But I mean, if you if you if you if you were asking me, Jim, do you want to take on my case? What are the chances of success? I would say under five percent that you're going to get an immigrant visa to the United States. Okay, that's what I want to know because, like, the I wanted it was um, approved because we gave them tons of evidence and all that. Because, but again, she was. They, they think you've played tricks on them. They believe you had. I mean, they they could deny you entry for the the prior. The prior case saying that you submitted a false divorce decree or had no divorce. No, 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 no. They, no, they, 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 that one was cleared. They cleared it. Okay. Okay. James, I'm just telling you my thoughts. I, I understand. Don't, yeah. I don't think you're coming back to the United States. I don't. I don't think okay. you're coming on a visit. I don't think you're coming on, a, on an immigrant visa. Maybe I'm wrong. Call me, call me back if I'm wrong. Okay. Okay. I'll call you. Thanks, James. All right. See you, buddy. He put his foot down. That's all there is to it. Once you put your foot down, then that's that. So David is here. Hello, David. Hey, Jim. Can you hear me? I hear you just fine. Thank you. Oh, um, thank you for taking my call. This is my first time in your show. Found you found you on YouTube. So watch a Welcome. bunch of your videos already. Awesome. Uh, but my case, my, my question is probably much easier than the rest of your uh, guests. Okay. My, my wife and I had our marriage-based green card interview last week in Fairfax, Virginia. Um, the immigration officer was really nice. It took about 25 minutes, um, asked a few questions. Only I brought a huge folder of documents. He only asked for pictures and our baby's birth certificate because we had a baby since she's been here. Great. Um, so it went really well. And then at the end of you, at the end of the interview, I said, well, am I, am I approved? And he said, you know, he asked if I had any questions. And he goes, oh, no, I'm not authorized to, you know, give approval. I need to have my supervisor um, but let me backtrack for a second. So at the interview, I don't know, I backtrack further. Back, back <laughs> I, was, I was born, I was born in 1982. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> I, wish I, was born, I wish I was born in 1982. <laughs> um, no, so basically back in November, we, my wife and I, well, I bought a second house in Florida. So now we have two residences. I didn't file the AR-11 because I have, I didn't really, I don't know how late USCS finds a move. But basically, I have two residences. I go back and forth. I work for the federal government. So I have to be in my office physically one day pay period for uh, telework policies. Oh, I have, a friend who, I have a friend who does that. And what they, they're really smart. They go up on like the 31st of the month and the first of the month. So they get both days. <laughs> they get both months covered with one trip. That is smart. Yep. So basically, when the immigration officer asked for our documents, he asked my wife's license passport and ead she, uh she showed the license and she goes and he says oh florida i thought you lived in virginia and then i basically said well we have two residences we live in florida but i commute back and forth you know because i have to be at work in you know in virginia every two weeks um and basically he didn't really oh then he said his only question after that was well which address do you want to use for your you know for, you know for your notices and your green card and i said What's easier for you guys? And he says, well, use your Virginia address. So, okay. So basically, you know, the interview went well. My concern is that, is that going to cause any issues? Like, is, is he going to think, you know, oh, my wife's, he didn't ask for my license, which would match my wife's. You know, we both have Florida license. Yeah. And she's 24 years younger. She's from the Philippines. So that, yeah, may be a race, whatever, red flag. My income's way up there. So that's not an issue. Um, how did looking. she enter? How did she enter? K one visa. Uh, so so they got, already, they've already approved of the relationship. Um, I, I, I guess. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, it, 
I guess so. My question is, does the immigration office see, see all the documents that were submitted on the I-129F? I mean, do they see all that stuff during the interview? Yeah, they can. See, to me, so to me, there's a more fundamental issue here, David, than than all that stuff. Um, it's that the officer is probably sort of pissed that the file landed on his or her desk because you're half Florida, half Virginia, and they're like, I think the reason he asked you or they asked you, where do you want to list? Because if it was Florida, they would send the case down there and tell them to decide it. That's what I think. It's like once you introduce that, that once you introduce the idea that someone's living somewhere else, then it just sends things off into a different trajectory because they're like, do I have jurisdiction to approve this case? How do I know where he's staying most of the time? Do I just take his word for it? Do I have to send an RFE? So it's the it's probably not the age gap. It's probably more so the confusion about I live in Virginia. I'm a Virginia USAS officer and I had this lady show up and she had a Florida driver's license. And that, by definition, just sends me into a different direction. Okay, so then my question would be, you know, we, we do spend most of our time in Florida and I just go up and stay there. At some point, I do want to sell the house. Um, so probably some point over the, over the late spring, summer. So, you know, when I asked them, which address do you want? Because I know they have multiple systems, whatever I think they have. Right. Multiple. I mean, what's easier for you guys? And he could have said, you know, do Florida, but he said Virginia. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So now, you know, at the end of the interview, I started getting worried because we weren't approved. I'm like, well, is it like, are they going to be like, oh, well, he never asked my license. So are they going to say, oh, is she living in Florida and he's living in Virginia? Are they going to do come and do like home inspection or that kind of crazy stuff? Maybe. Jeez. I'd say I'd say 10% chance. I think I think most likely this is a little bit of a head scratcher for him. He goes and talks to somebody down the hall. They say, yeah, it's fine. And off it goes. I think I have you ever sponsored someone for an immigration benefit before? Nope. This is my first marriage, her first marriage. Never sponsored anybody before. We have the baby together. You know, I, you know, my, I, I, think, right you're, I think you're fine. I think they're just a little confused and a confused mind does not take action. So I think, I think when things settle down, I think probably a couple of weeks she'll have her green card. I'm not worried. Okay. One last question. Let's say it drags on, you know, cause you know, sometimes these things drag on for weeks yeah. or months. Yeah. And Oh, you can file that man to miss, whatever you call right. it. But well, my question is, her EAD expires in July. Should I, I, I want to make sure she gets that EAD. So my question is, should I just apply for it now or should I just yeah. wait for the green yeah. card? No, go ahead. There's no fee. Now, which address should I use when I apply for the EAD, not to confuse their systems? Whatever you've been using. So use a Virginia one then, because that's the one that's in their system. Yep. Okay. And at some point, my last question is, my some point, like I said, when I decide to sell my house, hopefully it's after the green card, um, I can't wait forever, but, you know, probably the next couple months, I'm going to list the house for sale in Virginia. When should, when should I go online to change the address? At what point? Like when I list it or when it's basically on, on a contract, when would you advise you, uh, me. I'm, a, I'm always a big fan of using the address where you sleep at night. So I would say when you start sleeping, when you no longer sleep at the address in Virginia, then I would I would change it then. So meaning like, um, I guess I sleep in Florida most of the time. I mean, like, yeah, 28 days of a month. So should I be, just change it now or is that going to screw things up? I think it'll screw things up because then I'll, then they're like, how do I prove this case? It's, it should be down in Florida. I, I would just chill. I wouldn't do anything for a little bit. I would just sit tight. Okay. All right, Jim. Thank you so much. Thanks, David. See you, buddy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Got a lot of birthdays coming up. A lot of birthdays. Uh, Blessed Child's coming up. Uh, Lindy's coming up. And Robert's is on Saturday. How about that? Blessed Child, everybody. All right. We got a lot of April birthdays. All good, but we know that Virgo's rule, so what can I say about that? Um, all right, Island Guy. What do you got, Island Guy? Hi, Jim. Um, I've been a big fan of your show um, for awesome. a while. Thanks for um, watching. Yeah, uh, I just had three quick questions for you. Um, Go for it. So my wife and I, we did the I-485 packet, um, you know, with the I-130, um, I-485, work card, everything, like I-131. And... Recently, she changed her name to my name. Um, so I'm just wondering, like, when do we let USCIS know, like, that she changed her name? Like, 
Is she the U.S. citizen? Is she the foreign national? U.S. citizen. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's that important. I mean, whenever whenever it's done, you can notify them. It's not a big deal. Okay. And then the second question. So we moved into an apartment um, last month. And okay. um, since and we moved since filing the I-130. And because I know I watched, you know, a couple of your videos, I know you're like, you know, prove up the case and everything. Um, mm -hmm. So I uploaded our lease onto the portal, like the online portal. Mm -hmm. um, so do you think that's going to confuse them? Like, do you, or do you think that's fine? I think that's okay. Okay. All right. I just didn't, I didn't want to cause any confusion. And then the last question um, so I got my approval for the work card already. Like I got it in the portal. Um, and then on Saturday, we got the actual physical I-797 receipt. Um, do you know the current processing times for the work card as it's as it stands right now? I mean, it's a total crapshoot now because, you know, everybody and his brother filed before last Friday. And... Um, they were getting a little faster. I think they're going to get slower again. So we'll just, I, I, I think stated processing times right now have sort of gone out the window because they're promising to do things faster. They're taking more money to do that, but there's going to be a big surge in people that filed. So I think, I mean, generally I'm saying, I'm telling people still four to six months, but there's people that get them in two weeks and there's people that wait a year. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Jim. See you buddy. Yep. Thanks for watching. All right, I got a little treat for y'all. Um, this comes from our friends Ryan and Donna from uh, Jamaica. They were um, let me let me make sure I get the right one. Yep. All right, hold on. I'm gonna play this for you. Turn up the volume. Uh, as you know, we have big fans down in Jamaica. A lot of friends of the show in Jamaica and Donna is one of the big ones. Somehow she got us a shout out on um, on the Soul Glow show down in Jamaica yesterday. So I'm gonna play this for you because it makes me so happy. I've watched it probably 10 times, but you gotta listen because it goes sort of quickly, okay? All right, here we go. Donna Thompson says, big up Hacking Immigration Law Firm helping Jamaicans and others give a free consultation. Big up Jim Flo, big him up. <coughs> Hacking Immigration Law Firm. All right. Deco, two cases. I don't give a... Donna Thompson says, big up. Hacking Immigration Law Firm helping Jamaicans and others giving free consultation. Big up Jim Flo. Big him up. <laughs> Is that the best thing or what? Like, that just makes me laugh so much. I, I love it. I love Donna. She, I, I think about Donna. I, th I have to say it. I'm walking around and it is, and I think about Donna, and it makes me, it makes me happy. So, I appreciate that. And that, you know, when you have fans that are making content for you, that you've really arrived, right? When con, when fans are making content for you and giving you a plug in Jamaica on the Soul Glow Show, like I told my wife and daughter, they were so unimpressed. They're, they're like, they, they're so bored with my YouTube antics. They just think it's just so dumb. But, um. It was it made my day. So and Ryan Ryan was emailing me all day yesterday about it. So that was that was fun. All right, let's talk to Ed. Ed, what do you got? Hello, thank you so much for having me. It's uh, I've been watching your show for for probably a year and a half now, and really appreciate what you do for us. Thanks. Um, so I got a question for you, sir. Um, I have a U.S. citizen uncle who applied for his brother I one thirty petition. So the intended immigrant entered without inspection back in the early 90s. Um, the brother applied for him in uh, late September of 2000. Mm -hmm. And at that point, he was residing in the U.S. He decided the, the intended immigrant, the, one, the beneficiary, left the country in 2004. Um, so according to the visa bulletin, we're getting close um, with the F4 category, I believe. So we're wondering if what would the process look like? Is it still possible? How would that exactly work at this stage? So, so who's applying for what relative? Tell me the the relationship. It's a brother. They're brothers. So a U.S. citizen is applying for his brother of Mexican national. 
And when he applied for his brother, he applied in 2000 under the Life Act? It, it was an I-130. I don't know exactly. And then um, the brother was inside the United States at the time that he applied. Correct. But then the brother left. In 2004. And what proof do we have that the brother left when he came? Or when he left, sorry. Yeah, that's the issue that I don't know what we could find. Maybe he has some documents when she when he went back to Mexico and worked over there. I have no idea what we could actually prove because when he left, he just crossed the border, you know, um, in a vehicle. He as didn't a passenger. He didn't take out an ad in the newspaper and say, "Hey, I'm moving back to Mexico." Yeah, there's no plane ticket or anything like that. Yeah, so that's a problem. Um, and then another question that could be a problem is, you know, he entered once before, right? He entered that had he had he entered and come back before that i don't believe so um yeah so that's a big issue okay that's a big issue because if he has multiple entries and exits then that could be a, a permanent bar on coming back yeah I, I asked a lawyer it was a different case different question but somebody they mentioned that if you and anything before 97 it's kind of forgiven any unlawful entries yeah is that yeah. true could be could be true yeah okay um I'm happy, Ed, to take a look at all this for your uncle or whoever the relation is to you. I'm, yeah. It's it's too big of a project to just talk about here at the end of the show. It's it's I mean, he probably has no immigration history. Did he did they when they filed the I-130, did they use use his American address or did they use an address back in Mexico? Address in the United States, yeah. Yeah. So there's gonna be a lot to explain. They're gonna be confused. We're going to want to make sure the case is still alive. Has anybody received any kind of correspondence on the case anytime recently? Not yet. And we have an issue also that we lost the receipt notice. It, we might be able to find it if we just search hard enough. We found the actual I-130 petition, the copy of it, but we don't have the receipt notice. So I can't exactly look it up to see where it's at. Yeah. So it sounds like there's a lot of work that has to be done. There's some research we could do and some tracking down of stuff, but it's, it's, uh, it's going to be tough to get this guy here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sounds great. Thank you. So should I reach out to you or yeah, you can email me? Sure. Is there is there a way to potentially pull up the, the receipt notice with USCIS um, if we can't get our hands on it? The petitioner, the petitioner is still alive. Yes. The petitioner could do a Freedom of Information Act request to try to find the I-130 and that would lead to the, the receipt number. That's what I was thinking. OK, great. Um, can I ask you one quick thing? Um, related to his spouse and kids so he had a few kids that were born after 2000 so they're under 21 with is there any chance that they could come in also maybe okay they can they can be added yeah but then the question is you know there's there's a lot of other stuff before we get to that right 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 but the kids that are over 21 i mean this was back in 2000 some of these kids were born in the late 80s i mean those are they're on nothing the can be done for them okay, okay. good deal thanks Ed. thank you so much i appreciate yeah. it Thank you. Yeah, yeah. All right, everybody. We're going to cut a little bit short. I got to actually do another show for something else in about two minutes. So um, big up to all the Yardies out there. Hope everybody's well. Thank you, Ryan, for sending that over. That made my day. Um, tomorrow's show, back to our old late slot, 4 p.m. Central. 4 p.m. Central. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Maybe not. Maybe not four. Uh, oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Four o'clock tomorrow, we'll be here uh, in our old our old time. Might be at home, might be here, but uh, I will be here for an hour tomorrow answering as many of your immigration law-related questions as I can. In the meantime, we have lots of free resources for you. You can email us, info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com if you're thinking about hiring us, or call us, 314-961-8200. You can, uh, Michael, go ahead and just send me what you got. Um, the uh, YouTube channel. You can subscribe to that. Um, once the shows are done for Ramadan, I'm going to take a break and start posting new content. We also have our TikTok. You can follow us at immigrate at hacking immigration. No, at immigration hacking is our TikTok handle. Don't look at all the posers. There's all these people pretending they're me on TikTok trying to swindle people out of money. So don't don't uh, do that. Matt's asking how Nora like playing goalie. Well, Matt, she got a concussion in her second game. So we'll see. Her next game should be Saturday, but she likes it. She's aggressive. And so she liked it. Um, and then uh, the Facebook group, Immigrant Home, we'll see you in there. Thanks, guys. Bye, everybody. Have a good night.